We have a couple more topics in the upfront therapy, but I have to ask maybe, uh, Rich, for this one. What is the role today of allogeneic stem cell transplantation and our patients with CLL, do, we, do you still utilize it? But uh, what type of patient would you recommend it in? And for example, the 17P minus patient that you get into a good response and ibrutinib, would that be a patient that you would at least look into maybe going to an allogeneic stem cell transplant or not? So I think the role of allogeneic transplants definitely evolving at this point in time. And the further we get out with data on the um, on the ibrutinib and idelisib treated patients, the better we'll be able to address that question. At the present time, the, you know, the question that I think is most important is when does a patient become unsalvageable? Mm -hmm. And you know, so these are patients who are unsalvageable because they've you know, developed such resistant disease or they've developed a Richter's transformation most commonly. And so if I have a patient who's really at high risk of that, and that would be primarily the 17P deleted patients, those are the one group of patients who I'd consider after getting them into a very good response. If they're young, mm -hmm. sending them for an allogeneic transplant. You know, ultimately it'd be nice to know long term that patients can continue to do well. My hope is that one day we'll be able to say, you know, that you know, these patients will remain in continuous remission and that we can do away with allogeneic transplants. But until we have, you know, these patients who are at risk of having these transformations in these, the development of resistance disease, I think we still need to think about allogeneic transplanting. Any other comments? I think that's correct. I mean, uh, for patients who have Richter's transformation, I think what's very important for us now to identify are what are the features of patients who are likely to develop resistance to the newer agents, because we're seeing that. Sure. And I think that uh, there's an interesting abstract I know we wanted to discuss about uh, finding complex karyotypes. Yeah. If you have I mean, I tell patients if your genetics are complicated, it's not uh, a good sign. Uh, and if you have complex genetics, a complex karyotype on cytogenetics that's looking at the chromosomes themselves, I'm not talking about fish analysis, uh, that can be potentially a, um, a kind of an indicator of heterogeneity or clonal instability. Uh, and those patients may be at greater risk for developing resistance. So whether these patients, by and large, might also be candidates for allogeneic transplantation is, is going to be, I think, something we have to debate. In fact, in that abstract that's being presented at this meeting, I think the suggestion in those patients with a complex karyotype, and in the, even if it includes a 17P minus, the patients with just 17P minus do better. With the complex karyotype, uh, I think the conclusion from those authors where that once you use, utilize ibrutinib to a good response, you really should be pushing those patients to other therapy. Or I think we have to be careful because not all 17P minus patients are alike. Yeah. And I would say that three quarters of them have a defect in this gene P53, which means a quarter of them actually have wild type P53 function, which is very important for the response to chemotherapy. So 17P does capture a lot of patients, but they're not a uniform group. Very important. Um, I think one other point, I'm sorry, John. No, so I was going to say, we, we, I think we have to remember, too, that, say, that what's bad with one therapy can be bad with another. And, you know, so this past, you know, this past year, you know, we looked at complex karyotype and outcome relative to allogeneic stem cell transplant in CLL. And, in fact, that, the group of patients that have complex karyotype don't really appear to benefit from transplant. You know, that's the, that you don't see, you don't see the plateau. Most of those patients will relapse after transplant. So Would they have done worse without the transplant though? Do they have you maybe salvage or gave them additional time well, for survival? Well, you know, the, certainly the quality, of, the quality of life for most patients with transplant, it's, imagine, it's, it's difficult to imagine that it could be, you know, that it could be worse with something else unless they, you know, unless they died, you know, and. and right, right. But I think it's also a, Important question to ask, though, now that we have these new agents that do work in these 17P deleted cases, yes. whether or not we might be able to make an allogeneic transplant more feasible because we can get them into deeper remissions and maintain those remissions. Well, we're, get, we're sort of getting into a, into being contentious. You know, I, 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 you know, I really think for these complex karyotype, you know, we be, need to be thinking beyond transplant. You know, to, chim to, to CAR T cells and to other therapies. You know, where, you know, if if something, if we have data that something really is not going to work. Then let's let's move them on to a, to something new that's immunologic that has a chance of working. 
Well, another dilemma I'm uh, struggling is that what is the best timing for transplant? Right. Uh, in the past, we uh, reserved transplant for young patients who has very high risk disease. So once they're feeling first line or second line therapy, that's mm -hmm. when I would consider allogenic stem cell transplant. But now that we're having so many very effective salvage ther uh, therapies with the novel agents, uh, there, many of them are having great response. So, should you send them to right. transplant when they're having a great response, or wait. should you, you know, right. should you wait because the right. response might be lasting and there may be other novel agents coming up? So, my right. thought, at least right now, is that I would, as long as I have one effective salvage therapy available, so that probably will be the one I'll reserve before the transplant because you do want to be able to achieve a good response prior into the transplant to get a. Uh, get a good result outcome out of the transplant. I think that. Uh